sunrise and sunset, promise and fulfillment, birth and death. The whole drama of life is written in the sands of time. We present a new series of radio programs, The Clock. The dictionary defines the word tourist as one who makes a tour, a traveler. Someone who goes from place to place learning new ways of life and seeing new things. To many of us, the word has a romantic quality, and we envy the lucky globetrotter. Just as Liz and Henry Briggs envy the travelers who pass the little tourist house and gas station they own just off the big state highway on the rim of Death Valley. It's the location, Henry. Now, why should people stop overnight at a place like this? They're on their way to Hollywood, maybe, or New York. They don't have time. I know, Liz, I know. You told me before. But you seem to forget that a man behind the wheel has got to get some rest. Not here, though. Not in this forsaken spot. And I don't blame them. Mm. I bet it must be nice to travel. Europe, Africa, India. Can you imagine seeing the Taj Mahal in the moonlight? What have we got for supper? (laughs) Supper. That's all you ever think about. Your stomach. Aren't you even interested in anything else? Right now? No. Someone's pulling up outside. I like the pumps. Station's closed. You're not stopping in front of the pumps, Henry. You stopped by the door. Say, maybe you want to spend the night. Look at that car, Henry. Isn't it handsome? Hmm. You sure must be going places. Look at the size of that trunk he's got strapped to the back. We better go out and see what he wants. All right. Evening. Evening. I saw your sign. I was... Wondering if you had any room. Oh, we've got plenty of rooms. Three dollars a night, single. A six with meals. Oh, that sounds fine. We are all parked the car. <laughs> oh, it's it's all right where it is. My luggage is in the back. Well, how about that trunk? Uh, you want to leave it there, I guess, if you're only staying for the night. Oh, I may stay longer, so I'll take it upstairs with me. My name's Hewlett. Jason Hewlett. And mine's Briggs. And this here's the message. How do you do? Well, glad to know you. That's quite a trunk you've got there, Mr. Hewlett. I never saw so many labels. Goodness, look at this, Henry. Paris, London, Cairo, Compton. Hey, stay away from that, please. What? I I don't like anyone going near my things. I was just looking at the labels, Mr. Hewlett. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I, that was rude of me. Uh, yeah, yes, that trunk has been around quite a bit. It's... Had its share of experience. <laughs> it looks kind of heavy, mister. I'd better help you unstrap and carry it upstairs. Uh, you'll, you'll be very careful. Why, sure. All right, we'll carry it up together. Oh, first, here's three days' rent in advance. Huh? I'll want a quiet room on the top floor, if possible. And I want all my meals served there. Well, that's, uh, that's kind of irregular. I'll pay you extra for it. Is it okay with you, Liz? Sure, it'll be a pleasure to put ourselves out a little for a traveling man like Mr. Hewlett. And he might even tell us all about the places he's been to and the things he's seen and done if he gets a little time. <laughs> you never can tell, Mrs. Briggs. I might. Oh, what a load that trunk was. You must have bricks inside. <laughs> Gold bricks, maybe, the way he kept telling me to be careful. Did he like his room, Henry? No, sure, he's not hard to please. Seemed to have plenty of money, too, the way he handed out. Did you ask him about his business? What he does? Now, listen, Liz, that's his business, not ours. You got a bad habit of being too curious. Man's got a right to some privacy. Oh, well, my goodness, it can't do any harm to ask him what kind of work he does. Mm. Maybe he's a government agent or something. All those labels on his luggage. Your trouble, you go to too many of those spy pictures, government agent. <laughs> My guess is this guy's a salesman. He's got that trunk full of samples. Yeah, there he comes. Now, don't ask him any questions. Hello. Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Hewlett. Uh, would you mind having dinner downstairs with us just for tonight? It's all prepared, and if I take the time to bring it up, it might get cold. Well... Well, all right. 
Just for tonight. Well, sit down. Make yourself comfortable. I'll have the soup on in a jiffy. <laughs> it's, uh, it's nice to have you with us, Mr. Hewlett. Oh, thanks. Uh, how far is the nearest town? Oh, about 11 miles east. Uh, Death Valley's west. 11 miles, eh? Is it a large town? Large enough. This goes in every Monday to do her shopping for the week. The town's called Warren City. I I thought I might do a little business there. Oh, what kind of business? Liz, be careful uh, of that suit. It's a nice place you have here. Oh, it could be nicer. I'd be wanting to do some redecorating, but Henry says it's too expensive. <laughs> I like the place the way it is. Henry's not a man for novelties. I remember how I had to beg him to buy a radio oh, years ago. <laughs> he said it was only a newfangled toy that wouldn't last. You, uh, you own a radio? Oh, yeah, a good one, too. We usually listen to the news about this time. Uh, say, Liz, will you turn it on? I, I wish you wouldn't turn it on right now. No? I, I, uh, I have a slight headache. It's too much driving. The, the radio wouldn't help it any. Hmm. All right, Mr. Hewlett. You're the guest, and... Pass salt, Liz. Rolls, Mr. Hewlett. Oh, thanks. Nice and fresh, too. There's a truck that delivers them every morning, along with the papers. The, the newspapers? Mm hmm. Warren City Gazette. Mm -hmm. Pass about a list. You're rather secluded out here, I imagine. It must get lonesome. Oh, I don't know. Oh, it does, Henry, and you know oh. it. Our nearest neighbor's a mile away, Mr. Hewlett, and there's never much excitement. I guess a man like you would find it boring, Mr. Hewlett. A man like me? I mean, a man who's traveled as much as you have. Oh, I, I, uh, I uh, suppose your business must be pretty important to make you get around as much as you do. Mr. Hewlett's business is none of ours, Liz. I was just saying. Oh, my business is books, Mrs. Briggs. Oh, books. <laughs> you sound disappointed. Well, I... I just didn't think it was anything like that. No? <laughs> then what did you think it was? Liz, please. Oh, now, don't be so narrow-minded, Henry. The gentleman wants to talk. Oh, it's quite all right, Mr. Briggs. I don't mind. Now, tell me, what business did you think I was in? Oh, some kind of traveling line. Uh, exotic perfume or, or silks from China. Spices and rare jewels. Oh, now, you're kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is a walking geography book. All she ever does is look at maps. <laughs> well, travel is educational. And in a way, you know, my business is rare, so to speak. You see, I collect very rare volumes in every language. You don't say. I travel from country to country, trading and buying and, well, seeing the world. Have you ever been to Persia? Once or twice. Oh. I picked up a very expensive edition there that belonged to a sultan many years ago. A sultan? The book was bound in woven gold, and there were rubies on the covers. That must have cost a lot of money. Yeah, is, is that why he's so careful about that trunk? No, I... Well, well that is not exactly... I, I sold that particular volume to an English millionaire. The trunk is another matter. Not really interesting enough to discuss. I, uh, I think I've had enough to eat. But you've only finished your soup. Oh, I'm not very hungry. I, I had something just before I came here. Well, if you want me to, I'll bring a sandwich up for you later on, Mr. Hewitt. Oh, never mind. That, that won't be necessary. Oh, I, I noticed some matches inside on one of the tables. May I borrow them? Hmm. Sure. Help yourself. Thanks. And, uh, good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Hewlett. It's funny, uh, he got awful touchy. Especially when we mentioned that trunk. Hmm. Ah, well, no counting for dispositions. Henry, I wonder what's in there. In where? His trunk. He never told us. Why should he tell us? It's none of our affairs. I was just curious. Oh, that's the trouble with you, Liz. One of these days you're going to regret that curiosity of yours. Hey, don't be silly. Yeah, well, as long as he's gone, we may as well hear the news. I put the radio on good and loud so we can listen while we... Hey, Liz, come in here a minute. What's the matter? Radio's broken. The radio's broken? Look. See? Valves won't light up. 
Well, that's funny. I was using it only two hours ago and worked fine then. You did? Well, what could have happened to it, Henry? Hmm. Well, maybe the, uh, the light cord's out of the socket. No. Oh, well, cord's okay. Henry, look. Say. All the wires inside are broken. Why? They look as if they've been pulled out deliberately, Liz. Liz, are you sure you weren't careless about using this machine? Oh, do you think I'm silly enough to yank out all those wires? Well, then how did they come loose? I don't know. Has anybody been inside the house today? No. Are you sure? Well, stop asking me so many foolish questions. Well, I'll take this into town at the end of the week. It'll take quite a while before it's fixed. You know how rushed they are these days. Now we won't be able to hear the news. Henry. What? There was someone inside the house besides me. Who? And he was in this living room. You mean Mr. Hewlett? Yes. But why would he want to go around ruining people's radio sets? I don't know if he did it. It just seems peculiar. But he was here, Henry, alone. Just before he went upstairs. Yeah. He wanted to get those matches. Do you think he did it? Oh, I don't know. Why don't you ask I him? I can't do that. Not without proof. Well, if I were you, I would, Henry. But he's some kind of practical joker. Well, if he is, that... This isn't so funny. Well, if you won't ask him, I will. In the morning. And Henry... Well... I'm also going to ask him point blank just what he's got inside that trunk. Curiosity is a very peculiar thing. Once instilled in the mind, it grows stronger with the passage of time. And every hour only serves to feed its insatiable appetite. And people who finally give in to its gnawing pain have forgotten too soon what curiosity did to the proverbial cat. Is he up yet, Henry? I don't know, Liz. I didn't hear him move around. No, I've got his breakfast ready. I'm going to take it up to his room. Oh, Liz, uh, uh, maybe you'd better not ask him anything. Oh, uh... why not? He broke our radio, didn't he? But we're not sure. Then who else did it? Well, if you ask me, if you do ask him, be polite about it. It was maybe just an accident. All right, Henry. What did you do with the newspaper? Newspaper? I didn't take it. Well, I found the bread outside. The paper was missing. What do you think they forgot to deliver it? They haven't forgotten in three years, Liz. Henry, there's something queer going on in this house, and I'm getting worried. Now, don't let your imagination go haywire. It's not my imagination, and you know it. First the radio, now the newspapers, and that trunk. What on earth could he have in that trunk? Now, Liz. I'm going up to his room right now with his breakfast. And I'm going to find out what this is all about. Once and for all. Well, what is it? I've got your breakfast, Mr. Hewlett. I'll leave it outside the door. I'll pick it up later. But... I want to see you. What do you want, Mrs. Briggs? Uh, here's your breakfast, eggs and bacon, rolls and coffee, orange juice, too. Now put it on the table. Now, what did you want to see me about? I, uh, I was wondering if you tried to use our radio last night. Your radio? Yes, you see, it's not working right now. I don't know anything about your radio. Well, I, I just thought I'd ask. Uh, have you seen this morning's paper? No. Uh, neither have we. It didn't come today. First time in three years. Mrs. Briggs, I'm very busy. You'll excuse me, won't you? Oh, why, of course. I didn't mean to disturb you. I'll come back for those breakfast dishes in about an hour. Uh, no, I'll bring them down myself. What are you staring at? Those padlocks on the trunk. There are three of them. Good, good morning, Mrs. Briggs. Uh, good morning. I tell you, he frightens me, Henry. The way he looked at me when I mentioned the padlocks. 
Well, he was mad because you didn't mind your own affairs, and he was right. Nevertheless, you're not leaving me alone in this house with that man, Henry. For the love of Mike, you're acting like a frightened kid. You'd think he was some kind of a murderer. Henry! What brought that into your mind? Liz, will you cut it out? It's a sign, that's what it is. You're thinking of that as a warning. Look, you need some air, and you've got your shopping to do today. Take the car and drive into town. By the time you get back, well, maybe you'll see how silly you've been. All right, I'll go and do my shopping. But tonight we're giving him notice. He's got to get out of this house by tomorrow. And he can take that awful trunk along with him. Padlocks, labels and all. Mrs. Briggs. Good morning, Freddie. In town for the weekly shopping. Yeah, that's right. I got my list all ready. Fine, just read it off. Uh, four cans of tomato juice, three cans of peas, a box of sugar. Pretty weird story, wasn't it, in the Gazette this morning? Uh, I didn't get to read the papers today. The whole town's talking about the murder, I guess. What? What? That story in the Gazette. It concerned a murder? Well, the cops aren't sure. The body hadn't been found yet, but the girl's missing. No doubt about that. Where did all this take place? Lawrenceville. That's about a hundred miles from here. A hotel waitress disappeared from her room. But oh, why do they think it was murder? Well, they don't rightly know, I guess. The police just put together the facts and figured that something pretty awful had happened to her. They're still looking for the body. Her room was a mess when they broke in. Do they know who might have done it? One of the guests, maybe. Trouble is, there was a convention going on and the hotel was full up. So many people checked out at once. But in a hotel, how could the... The body disappeared. Well, the police aren't talking. First of all, they haven't even proved there is a body. But if there was... Yes? They figure it might have been taken out of the place in a trunk. Well, that was one of my better class moments. One that Mrs. Briggs will always remember. Henry. Henry, listen. What's the matter? There was a story in the papers today. The whole town's talking about it. A girl was murdered, they think. What? In Lawrenceville. And the police believe her body was taken away in a trunk. Oh, now, oh, Liz. Henry, don't stand there and disagree with me. Why does he keep it locked? Why is he so mysterious about everything? We've got to do something. Jason Hewlett may be a dangerous killer. Now, you can't go around calling people killers just because they own trunks, Liz. Henry, if you don't do something, I will. <laughs> What do you want me to do? Call the police. Uh, I tell you, that newspaper story could have fitted in with Jason Hewlett. The man there after is heading west. He left Lawrenceville yesterday afternoon. Do they know what he looks like? No, but they did mention something about a car. <laughs> Just open the door upstairs. Mrs. Briggs. Yes, Mr. Hewlett? You needn't bring me my dinner this evening. I don't want to be disturbed at all. Is that clear? Yes, Mr. Hewlett. <laughs> Henry, look. Why would he break the radio and steal the paper? So we wouldn't hear the news or read it, don't you see? He didn't want us to know what's going on. Oh. Henry, you've got to call a state trooper and get him to open that trunk. All right, Liz, I'll do it now. Is this his room? Yes, officer. The trunk's in there, too. A big trunk, big enough to hide a body. What is it? Open up, mister. State police. Well, what's the trouble? Your name, Hewlett? Yeah. When were you in Lawrenceville last? Lawrenceville? Well, I've never been there. There's the trunk I told you about, officer. Let's have a look at it. Uh, now, just a moment. That trunk happens to belong to me. It's private property. I know it. Let's have the keys to those padlocks, mister. Do you have a search warrant? Right here. I tell you, there's nothing inside that trunk except some rare editions of books I've purchased. That's why I've kept it locked. Just to make sure, let's take a look. The keys, mister. All right. Here. I'll see you in court for this. All of you. You can't treat me like a common criminal and get away with it. And as for you, Mrs. Keep Blake, away from me. Move back now. Give me room to open this lid. What? Inside, officer? Books. <gasps> Books. Well, are you satisfied? Oh, I'm afraid I made a mistake. I'll say you made a mistake. Sorry, Mr. Hewlett, but you know how it is. Some women just can't keep their noses out of things that don't concern them. Now get out of here, all of you, and leave me alone. Well, Liz, 
got any more bright ideas about trunk murders? <laughs> Better look under the bed tonight. Maybe a full-grown gorilla prowling around the house. Oh, I've never been so embarrassed in my life. I've been <laughs> such a fool. Ed, do I still have to stay home and hold your hand? Oh, stop talking like that, Henry. <laughs> I feel awful enough as it is. I'm going to town to bowl and for Pete's sake apologize to Mr. Hewlett for he sues us. You understand? Yes, Henry. I'll do it now. Who is it? I... Uh, I just want to see you for a second, Mr. Hewlett. I, I wanted to tell you Keep how sorry. Here. I wanted to apologize, Mr. Hewlett, that's all. All right, you apologize. Now get out. You don't know how stupid I feel. Just before my husband left the house, he told me to come up here. That trunk. Well? Were you packing to leave? What is that? No. Oh, no. You prying female. You asked for it. Now you're going to see it. No, 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 please. Let go of me. You're very sharp-eyed, aren't you? You notice things immediately. You've got a false bottom in that trunk. Well, look at what it's been concealing. Go on, satisfy your curiosity. Look at it. She's dead. You're quite right. She's dead and I strangled her. Would you like the details? Just stay where you are, Mrs. Briggs. I believe you mentioned that your husband's gone. Well, that seems to fit into our plans, doesn't it? Don't, don't hurt me, please. Do you like tours, Mrs. Briggs? Tours around the world? The labels on that trunk are interesting, aren't they? I won't tell if you leave me alone. You're going to get your wish, Mrs. Briggs. Yes. You're going to travel. You're going to make your journey with my other friend. Inside that trunk. No! There'll be plenty of room, Mrs. Briggs, for both of you. And if you're slightly cramped, it won't matter very much. You won't be aware of it, you see. Ah, you're choking me! Oh, it feels good to have my hands ah, around your throat, ah, Mrs. Briggs. Ah, I've been looking forward to oh, it. No, please! Ah. Let her go, you swine! Ah. <laughs> let go of her! Go on, let go of her! Ah. I'm flying out of you! <laughs> You all right now, Liz? I think so. Is he dead? No. No, but he, he won't make any more trouble until the cops get here. Oh, thank heaven you came back. I, I didn't have the car keys. You took them this morning when you drove to town. Now, you, you, you take it easy, Liz. I'll, I'll call the police. Henry. Yeah? Just one thing, Henry. When they take the trunk away... Well? Do you think we can keep the labels? Yes, the urge to travel is strong in all of us. And time takes on a new and exciting quality when we hit the broad white highway that ribbons out from coast to coast. And if by any chance you happen to take that trip this summer and your route carries you east or west, you might stop off at a little gas station on the rim of Death Valley and say hello to Liz and Henry Briggs. I suggest one precaution, however. Don't exhibit any trunks with labels. The clock will be heard again next week, same time. This program was written by Lawrence Clee and Hart McGuire was the voice of the clock. As Liz Briggs, you heard Margaret Christensen. As Henry Briggs, Don Crosby. And as Jason Hewlett, Len Bullen. With Jerry Wells as the officer. The clock, directed by John Saul, is a Grace Gibson radio production. <laughs>